one person. Trump can let one person out of prison and everything is cool, but he's going to still maintain systematic white supremacy. And notice Trump has been doing a lot of pardoning of certain people. He, he did this pardon of Jack Johnson. And today he was talking about giving a pardon to Muhammad Ali. You see what they, this is a PR move. It's like, I will give a pardon to these dead black people. And by the way, the, the Ali family came out and said, hey, he doesn't, Ali doesn't need a pardon because the, the, the Supreme Court overturned his conviction back in 1971. So uh, Muhammad Ali's conviction where they stripped him of his title, that was already overturned back in the 70s. So Ali can't be pardoned. But again, people like Trump, they'll get these symbolic situations and act like they're doing something for black society. And that's the little con game that the white supremacists like to play. And if Trump really wanted to do something about prison reform, understand Trump has been directly involved and non-justice when it comes to black people. Remember the Central Park Five. If Trump wanted to really do something about police reform and non-justice in the prison system when it comes to race, he would come out and apologize for the shit he was doing with the Central Park Five, how he demonized those innocent black men. He's directly involved with that. These brothers are still alive today. Trump's ass is still here today. He could do something about that. A, a small apology. Right now, he could do that. So don't be fooled by this whole Ali thing and Jack Johnson thing. And I also saw somebody, he um, Trump pardoned Dinesh D'Souza. And I saw some suspected white supremacists talk about well look at all the people of color Trump has pardoned Dinesh D'Souza don't count Dinesh D'Souza is a wannabe white supremacist he's an anti-black wannabe white supremacist East Indian dude so don't he there is no camaraderie between him and no other black people that's why I don't like using that people of color bullshit Dinesh D'Souza is a hardcore anti-black racist So don't be fooled by that. These are PR stunts, family. This is a way for Trump to let, and it's not for black people. Understand, they don't give a fuck about us. What it is, you got these white people who are voters, but who are on the fence. All of this is for them. All, is, all of this is to show the white voter who's on the fence about Trump's racism. It's for the white voter to see, hey, Trump ain't so bad. You can vote for him because white people, they understand if you vote for Trump, that's like, you know, that's like a, putting on a swastika at this point. White people in white society, they fully understand if you are a Trump supporter, you're damn near neo-Nazi at this point. That make America great again hat, that red hat, that's the modern day swastika at this point. That's the mark of the beast. And there are white people who... You know, they, they like a little white supremacy. They, they, they like the benefits of white supremacy, but they don't want that stigma. You understand? They don't want that stigma. And as far as Kim Kardashian, now what's in it for Kim Kardashian? Now, Kim Kardashian, she has black children. She has a black husband. No, she might be genuinely concerned about the well, <clears throat> the well-being of the sister who was in prison. I'm not saying that she is. I'm not saying that she isn't. But this is a good move for Kim Kardashian because, see, Kim Kardashian. Let me break this down to you, to you guys how white women get down. A lot of times when white women are younger, you know, they use the sex vixen thing. You know, Kim Kardashian came up off a of sex tape. A lot of them. When they're young in Hollywood, you know, they spread it wide, spread it open. You know, they, they, they work with what they have as a youth. But then when they get older, they got to flip that and then they have to become a humanitarian. That's that Angelina Jolie type of thing. And that's what they're doing with Kim Kardashian. They're trying to turn her 
into the next Angelina Jolie. That's going to be her next move because there's only so many pictures you can show of your pussy, ass, titties. There's only so much of that. When you get older, you're going to have to start moving into, into another direction. Now she's going to have to start moving in that other direction, and now it's going to be that humanitarian thing. It's going to be that Mother Teresa. She's going to be the new, just like Madonna. Like when Madonna was young, her pussy and titties were all over the place. She had a, a, a book, her with Big Daddy Kane, everybody's dick and pussy out. You know, when you're young, you do that. But now when, when Madonna got older and that, that you don't want to see that pussy and you don't want to see them titties no more, now you all over in Africa hugging Negroes. You all over in third world countries flicking flies off babies. You understand? You become the new Mother Teresa. It's like a, a, a white goddess type of thing. You become a, a white Mother Jesus to the poor and disenfranchised. That's the, that's the hustle. And there's good money in that. You know, they parade around and say, hey, look, I'm it's the Sally Struthers thing. She was another one. Sally Struthers. It's like, look, I'm over here with these poor little hungry Negroes. Send me a million dollars so I can feed them. I'm over here. They haven't had clean water. They do photo ops. They out there hugging Negroes. They go to the poorest part of Africa. They go to some remote village somewhere and hug Negroes. Hell, Ellen DeGeneres was just over there. And people were kind of clowning Ellen because Ellen went over there to a poor village and they were calling it poverty porn. They go over there hugging everybody up. But this thing, it shows one thing that's, that's very important for us to understand. People in the dominant white society can get stuff done within minutes if they want to. And I want black folks to really understand that. People in the white dominant society, they can get stuff done in minutes. In order for black people to get stuff done, we have to march, sing, get beat up, cry, get water hoses on us and we still don't get shit. But people in the dominant white society you can walk up into the White House for 20 minutes and get somebody freed out of prison who's been in there for 20 something years. That ain't nothing but good old white supremacy. I want y'all to understand how white supremacy works. That's white supremacy right there. The fact that you don't, you don't have to march, you don't have to sing, you don't have to walk around in a circle you go up in there and you say, hey, I want this person out of jail. And the white supremacists get on code and they can make it happen when they feel like it. When they feel like it. And the reason why so many black people are getting killed and so many black people are being funneled into the prison system and Nobody in the dominant white society really does anything about it is because they don't feel like doing anything about it. I want y'all to understand. Nothing happens because they don't want nothing to happen about it because they're perfectly fine with you going to jail and you getting killed and you getting beat up in large numbers. Now, every blue moon, they'll pick out one or two black people and say, hey, I don't want this one in jail. So let him out and they'll let him out. I want y'all to understand that. Don't miss that. Do not miss that. Don't miss that at all. So I don't I don't trip when I see protests and I see a couple of white people marching around in circles. No, that's bullshit. That's that's they they marching around because they want to march around. If they want to do something, they would do it. They don't have to march around. They know they got connections. They know who's who. They know who to talk to. People in the dominant white society are connected. They know who to talk to and they know exactly what to do. So when people start acting helpless and powerless, that's a game. Within the dominant white society, they're not. 
They know how to make stuff happen. And the thing is, I saw some coons after Kim Kardashian and Trump had this little meeting and they released the sister who was in jail. There were a couple of these Trump supporting coons who was jumping online talking about, yeah, Obama, Trump did what Obama couldn't do. And even a lot of the white supremacists who are Trump supporters, they were saying this too. They used this as an opportunity to say, well, Obama could have freed that woman, but Obama never did. I saw a lot of the right wingers saying that. Look at look at Trump doing what Obama wouldn't do. Obama wouldn't do that for black people. And I want y'all to be very clear. If Obama had freed that woman, all hell would have broken loose. These white supremacists would have lost their minds. They would have started firebombing bombing the White House. Don't let them fool you. If Trump, not Trump, if Obama freed that black woman, they would have had a hissy fit. You would have never heard the end of it. They would have lost their mind. They would have been, oh, look at this nigga showing favoritism. Oh, look at this nigga. They would have had a damn fit. So they can miss us with all that, how come Obama didn't do it bullshit. Don't let them fool you. They lost their minds when Obama said, hey, if I had a son, he'll look like Trayvon. Understand, they lost their mind over that. That's why they rallied around Zimmerman because Obama said that. That's why Zimmerman became a symbol for white supremacy because Obama said that. And they said, wait a minute, oh no. Oh no, this nigga's trying to use his power against us. So they all rallied around Zimmerman. You understand? But the thing is, all these fake pardons and you have athletes out here being punished by the Trump administration, it's, it's fake and it's phony. And I hope the NFL steps their game up. I hope they do a mass protest. They really got to make a move with the way that they're being treated by the Trump administration and the owners. They're really making these brothers bow down. But again, like I said, some of these coons were talking all of this stuff about, look at Kim Kardashian. She got a black person out of jail and Black Lives Matter didn't do nothing. Black Lives Matter never got nobody out of jail. Whoever Black Lives Matter is. I, Black Lives Matter, that's just a little code word. And these same coons were talking about Kim Kardashian up one, Black Lives Matter zero, Sean King zero, Tariq Nasheed zero. So uh, Trump and Kim Kardashian got a black person out of jail and Tariq and all these people didn't get nobody out of jail. And first of all, Coons, let's be very clear. You don't know who you're dealing with. I have got black folks out of jail. I personally bailed activists out of jail before. So you better do your goddamn research before you put my name in your mouth. All right? Do your damn research before you put my name in your mouth. Because I have gotten black people out of jail with my own paper. And I didn't do a, a big PR stunt about it or nothing. I just went and did it. I just dug in my pocket and did it. I didn't have a fundraiser or nothing like that. I dug in my pocket and got folks the fuck out of jail. So you better do your research about me. Coons. Because what I'm not doing is sitting around lapping on white zaddy's ass for an extra fucking butter biscuit. Coons. You dig? And the thing is, that's another thing. These coons out here, you think you're going to coon it up and you're going to be saved. That's not going to happen. All victims are equal in the system of white supremacy. I want y'all to notice not only a lot of um, young black people are getting targeted. Did y'all see the video in Chicago of this 10 year old black boy 
he got gaffled up by the police. He was outside playing. He got gaffled up by the police and they put him in handcuffs because they said he he looked like a suspect. And this kid was so scared, he was peeing on himself. It was the most horrible thing you will ever want to damn see. Horrible. Shout out to Mecca Bay. I see you, Mecca Bay, beloved. Mecca Bay out of Philly. She put 100 on the Melanoid Ministry. Shout out to that sister. But that young brother in Chicago, 10 years old, standing up there terrified. And in the video, they got the, the, the white supremacist race soldiers' faces covered. That I don't like. I, I don't like that. I don't like the fact that they're covering up these people's faces and they're saving them. But understand, all of us are being targeted right now. See, we thought we were going to find some kind of safe haven. We thought, okay, if I'm broke, I'll be safe because I won't be a target. They don't give a shit about you being broke. You said, well, hell, if I'm elderly, I'm too old for them to target me. They're targeting old black folks. Old black folks are getting shot in their driveway. If I'm a child, hell, I'm too young for them to target me. You got 10 year old children playing outside, getting put in handcuffs. They don't care how young you are. Look at what happened to me the other day. I'm gonna get more on that in a minute. I have a one year old. The police got my one year old up out the house and put him in an unmarked car with, with my wife. They got my one year old baby, don't even know what's going on, out the house at gunpoint last week you understand that we ain't safe nowhere in a system of white supremacy there's no hiding ain't no goddamn hiding we thought well I'm, a, I'm an athlete I got some money now you see how many athletes are being first of all the whole NFL is being targeted by white supremacists they're all being targeted and now you have individual athletes who are being targeted by police um, the brother who got beat up in Milwaukee, the, the athlete, they beat him up on film. It was another athlete who got tased. I forgot his name. It was another one. I, I don't know if he was an NFL player. I think he was an NFL player, but he got tased. You understand? And we're, we're just, none of us are safe right now. And people will talk all this shit. Well, you black people, y'all acting all oppressed. You, you got if you got some money, you ain't oppressed. Why are you acting like you oppressed, mother dude? And they would always say that shit to me about you look like you're living comfortably. How are you oppressed, motherfucker? They just pulled me out my house last week at gunpoint on the news, so the whole world can see. Last week they pulled me out my house. I'm waking up to helicopters and SWAT teams surrounding my house last week because some white supremacists put in a phony call. And let me say this about my case. Uh, I, and I want to say this to the family. I think LAPD might be in on the shit that happened to me last week. I think that they might be in on it. I think that LAPD might have been in on what happened to me last week just based on a lot of shit that I've been hearing from them, based on a lot of shit they've been saying. Because they came up in my spot heavy. They came up in the spot heavy. And there's some cats online who basically confess to calling the cops to my house, making a false terroristic threat and what happened to me last week for those who don't know I got I'm assuming that everybody knows what happened but last week for those who don't know I was at home sleep as I'm usually doing in the morning I'm getting up and I get a phone call from somebody saying that they're a police officer hey we're police we think you might be a victim of swatting come on outside and talk to our officers because we're at your house right now you dig? Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hello? 
Where are you? Yeah, dial it dial again. Okay, dial it again. Okay, great. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. All right. Um, but like I was saying, they um, I got a phone call. Somebody's like, hey, you need to come outside and talk to our officers. So I go downstairs. Then I look out my front door. There's guns and police all over the place. So I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I go out there and with my ID and they handcuff me, put me in a car and go sweep through my house. Yeah, the the police called me, but the thing is, when I did some research, that wasn't the police who called me. I did, my because I got my own research going on. I got my own research going on. Now, this is somebody else calling me right now, but that wasn't the police who called me that morning. That was somebody else. That wasn't the police who called me. And they were trying to get me outside so that they can get me shot. They were deliberately trying to get me shot. They were purposely trying to get me shot. And the media and the police, they keep trying to frame it as a swatting prank. They keep trying to minimize it. They keep trying to minimize it as a prank. These folks were deliberately trying to get me shot. They even got online like shit. We were hoping you got killed. I mean, they were taking credit for this shit. They were saying this shit online. The people responsible for it. And the law enforcement, they know who's responsible. And they seem like they're on their side. That was attempted murder. And what's... Uh, okay, my, my, my mods, we got some white supremacists in here. Y'all got to get them up out of here. But they keep trying to frame it as a prank and a... A swatting thing it's a it's a prank it's a joke no it's not black people we don't get swatted we get ambushed understand Tamir Rice was swatted that wasn't a prank he got killed somebody called in a false report and they showed up blazing on that child that other brother in Ohio who was at Walmart John I can't think of John's name it was a brother in Ohio he was at Walmart a white supremacist called the police talking about this brother had a gun and they ran up in Walmart blazing on that brother. So I want black folks to understand if that can happen to me, that can happen to all of us. If we're already being targeted wherever we are. Let me make Mecca Bay. I'm going to make you a mod, beloved. I'm going to make my sister Mecca Bay a mod in here so we can get a lot of mods to clean this thing up. But it's bad enough that when we're out and about, the white supremacists are calling the race soldiers on us. At Starbucks, we go to Starbucks, they're calling the race soldiers. We go to the park to have a barbecue, they're calling the race soldiers. We go swimming, they're calling the race soldiers. Anywhere we go, they're calling the race soldiers. Now, if you're at home, they can call the race soldiers on you and they can go up in your spot without a warrant. That This is deliberate, family. And what they'll do, they'll have a couple of white people get quote unquote swatted, but that's okay because they know nothing's really going to happen to them. Now, there was a, 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 I think a white or a Hispanic dude out there in Kansas who actually got shot. But for the most part, calling the police on a white person, they're not going to come in there with guns blazing. It rarely happens. But with us, they come in with guns blazing. They come in there with guns blazing. So this is their way of getting up in black people's homes without a damn warrant. Because they were all, and luckily I had cameras all in my house. And again, I'm sweeping and making sure everything else is cool. But they were running all through my house with with guns, no warrant at all, just some fake call, which somebody on the inside, yeah, which somebody on the inside of the police might have been working with these folks, and that's their way of getting up in your house. You understand? So this can happen to all of us, family. 
this can happen to any of us. Now, what's interesting, that kid from um, Parkland High School, David Hall, down there, he was one of the survivors of the shooting down there, that mass shooting, and he's been in the media, and the NRA has been really after that dude because he's, he wants gun reform. Now, he was swatted. They, he wasn't at home, but they said he was swatted. He was out of town, and somebody called the police at his house. They said it was a bomb threat, so they went down to his house, and the media immediately starts saying, this was attempted murder. Everything was attempted murder, attempted murder, attempted. They didn't play that off as just a prank or just a joke. They were all saying this was attempted murder. You dig? So we got to understand that we're all targets here. We're all targets in every form of life, every walk of life. So thinking that, okay, it's going to happen to that person and not me. You know what's funny? There was a couple of bedwinches. I saw some bedwinches low-key celebrating that there was an attempted murder plot on my life. I saw some bedwinches like, that's what he get for calling us bedwinches. Really, bedwinch? <laughs> like, Zaddy won't choke you the fuck out? Like, you won't get choked out by Zaddy and called all types of niggas by Zaddy. And, and end up drowned somewhere. These bedwinches are getting killed left and right. I don't sit up and be like, oh, that's what they get. I don't, I don't say that. I don't say that. You dig? But anyway, let me get out of here. I got some a lot of stuff to do. I got to get out of here, family. It's been real. I got a lot of folks coming to the house right now, but we're going to chop it up. Thank y'all for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Go to melanoidnation.org. You dig? Go to melanoidnation.org. Go to TariqElite.com. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com. Go to 1804Movie.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to holler. Y'all be good.